Hey guys, Gary here from RV Living Life. Uh, today we're going to be installing the Easy Touch RV from Microair. This is a replacement thermostat for our RV. Right now we have the RV Comfort 2.0, which is a basic, um, you know, RV thermostat for three different zones. This one's way more advanced, all sorts of options, and it can be uh, access remotely. It's also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth compatible, which is great. So that's the whole point of changing it. And I was going to make an install video with this, but the other one, you just pop it off the wall, unscrew it, and we just use command strips and you just plug this one right into the existing plug and stick it on the wall. It was too easy to even bother with making a video about it. But when you order these from Microair, you'll order it right on their website. And you go through a series of questions to figure out exactly which one is for you. Uh, some of them you may have to actually attach wires to it or whatever, but ours just comes with a plug, nice and easy. So uh, let's get on with some of the configuration. I'll show you a little more about this thing. It's great. It immediately shows me everything that's going on here. We're at 78 degrees setting. It's 74 inside here and it's 63 outside. The 63 outside is determined by your geographical location, which we'll get into in a minute. But anyway, you can click on your settings and you can look through here and you can see, you can adjust the touch screen, you can do your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth and what have you. Reset all, uh, you can set your brightness according to time of day and what have you. And over here you have your switches you know, if you click on your switches, you choose the available modes for this zone. This is zone one, and in our coach, we have uh, all three of these. So you can see, you can shut them out by poking at them. We have air conditioning, furnace, and electric on this one zone. When we go to the second zone, we turn them all on again. And here we click third zone, all on again. Okay, now you can also click normal or option two. So you could have like a daytime setting or a nighttime setting for all these or not quite clear why you would use that, but you can set it all up differently as well. Let's say you didn't want to run your furnace. You only want to go electric AC and electric heat, for example. But anyway, we have all three zones with all three items turned on because we have furnace heat, um, electric heat, aqua hot uh, heat, which is the furnace and the air conditioning. So that's our switches. For here, for, for here, we can select we have, whether we have a furnace or aqua hot. We actually have an aqua hot. So if I go back here, it'll show aqua hot, right? And you can, again, configure which ones you have for this. So we have an aqua hot and all three zones have all three things. Here you can select whether you like Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, Canada likes Celsius. My brain still thinks in Fahrenheit, so we'll put it at Fahrenheit. Here, uh, day or night. You can have day settings or night settings. Um, not quite sure what that is, but I think it's just whether it dims the screen or not. Not sure. Anyway, um, here temperature adjust. So on zone one only, you can create an offset. <clears throat> and zone one in our coach is up by the front glass in the coach. And if we set it at, uh, you know, if we set all three zones, zone one, two, and three, I'll say 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the front AC never shuts off and the other two will be off and hardly ever run because the front is where all the glass is and it gets hot up there. So I can set the front as an offset of about four degrees. Okay, so even though it actually says it's 80 up there, it's really not, it's probably around 76 degrees. The temperature sensor for the front is in the wall and it's right near the outside wall of the coach and the, you know, the heat from the sun and everything just, you know, makes it inaccurate. So anyway, we'll do that. Uh, the gap, the gap is between um, whether it turns on or off. Okay, so let's say you had it set at 72 degrees and uh, you wanted it to go off at 72 degrees or hit 73, it would shut off with a one degree leeway. And if it went down to say uh, 71 degrees, because you have it set at 72, it would come back on again. And you could have how much of a uh, temperature swing you'd want before the system turns on and off. And that would stop uh, short cycling, which is your AC or heat just coming on and off constantly in a small rig. 
but we have a pretty large rig, so we're okay leaving it at one. Here you can restart the system, which is fine. There's scheduling up there. You click that, you can set up a whole bunch of scheduled events. I'll get into that more after. Okay, next page. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, brightness, and cal uh, touchscreen calculation. So, calibration. So the touchscreen, if you reset it, all it does is it, it you know, uh, well, let's do it. Okay, so precisely press the targets on your screen. So that little square there, I'll push it that little circle, and then this one up here, and then down here. And this is to adjust where your image shows on the screen, right? And then here I try to poke these ones as best I can right on them. Okay. And we're good to go. So we've cali calibrated the screen. Uh, Wi-Fi info. Uh, that's where you can enter in your Wi-Fi. I found this easier to do on the phone because Bluetooth, uh, you can set up your Bluetooth right away uh, with your phone. Um, there's no password uh, that you have to enter in. As soon as you turn on the Bluetooth on your phone, uh, you have to create an account once you connect to this. And uh, once you create an account, it uh, sends you back an email and you confirm that that's you. And then you have access to this. And then once you have your Bluetooth set up, you can easily set up your Wi-Fi with a connection and password. And that's about it for the main settings when you get going. The rest of it we'll just do on the phone. So we'll go back to main. Okay. Now, before I go into a deep dive with the settings, I'd just like to explain that we have three AC units on our roof. There's zone one is the front, zone two is the middle, and zone three is the back. Three separate AC units. Also, these three units can also be heat pumps, so we can blow heat front, middle, and rear, zone one, zone two, and zone three, through the AC units in the roof. We also have an aqua hot system, which is, uh, it heats up uh, glyco and pumps it through the floor as well as registers of the coach and zone one is floor registers that blow heat out of uh, around the front of the room in the front of the coach zone two actually the glyco lines run in the floor and we heat the floor with zone two and zone three is in the back and we have floor registers there you know similar to what you would have in a home where the heat blows out of them so it's a little confusing. You know, we have zone one, zone two, and zone three, and we also have air conditioners and heat pumps in the top and heating through the floor and floor registers. Now also the floor and floor registers, uh, they're the, controlled by the aqua hot. That can be set at electric, which is good for around, down to around 50 or 55 degrees. And then you can flick on the propane and uh, then it'll be nice and warm. So in some of the video, you'll see I'll be putting on the heat pumps and others I'll be putting on the aqua hot, but still running it on electric. I uh, hope that's not too confusing, but I want to explain that before we get going. So let's get more into it. So when you originally set up your phone to connect or your iOS or Android device to connect to the thermostat, you originally connect Bluetooth and when you push that, it'll automatically ask you to create an account. Of course, this is the app that you download online. Once you get the app downloaded, you open it up and you connect to Bluetooth and it'll bring you right to MicroAir's site and you create an account. Once you create an account, it sends you back an email. You confirm you got the email and then your account is live. And then you're connected with Bluetooth. And then when you want to connect the Wi-Fi, you can go into the Wi-Fi settings and uh, it'll uh, ask you, you know, your Wi-Fi name and your password and then you're connected to the Wi-Fi. It's all pretty simple. You do Bluetooth first and then Wi-Fi. So I'm going to use Wi-Fi here now because the Bluetooth only works if you're really close to it. Um, if you have things in the way, it might be touch and go. So one of the first things you do when you do connect is you have to set up a device. So you would click the... Um, gear in the top right corner and you would click add a device to add one but I already have that done so now I can just select my device which I named easy touch and I am looking at uh, what I have set up now I have zone one set up you can see down the bottom center it's set at electric and uh, I have it set at 70 degrees and you can see inside it's 73 degrees so the electric um, heat pump will not come on. We have three ACs across the roof of the coach 
uh, from front to back, they're numbered one, two, and three. And it is 73 up at the front of the coach. So if I just increase the temperature here, you'll see that it will change from white to um, There we go, to red, and now you can hear the heat pump is coming on, the front heat pump. And then if I lower it back down, you'll see that it'll turn white again, and the heat pump will shut off. Now, the heat pump might take a moment to shut off. Oh, there it is already. So that's as simple as it is for setting up the, um, the heat pump. So, <clears throat> what I want to do ideally is if I was to keep the coach nice and warm, uh, zone one, which is the front of the coach, I would set at 72. Up here on the zone, I can click over to zone two, and this is my floor heat. Okay, now if you look down the bottom center, I have it aqua. I can choose aqua hot or electric or auto or fan only or cool. I have it on aqua hot. The AquaHot is a glyco system that pumps fluid around the coach and it runs through registers on the floor for heating zone one and zone three. And for zone two, it runs glyco through the tubes in the floor itself and it warms the floor up. So I have the floor set about eight degrees higher than the front heat pump. And what that does is it makes the floor nice and warm. And you're generally supposed to send it, set it about 5 to 10 degrees above whatever the temperature is at your other zones to have the floor be warm. And uh, if you set it quite a bit higher, you really don't even need to turn on the other uh, heat pumps. You can just run the glyco through the floor, the aqua hot. Uh, we have it on electric, so it doesn't use any propane. This is good down to about 50 degrees. If it gets below that, you do have to turn on the propane to keep the glyco in the floor and the registers warm. But anyway, my front one is set at 72. My zone two, which is the floor, I've set at 80 and on aqua. And then over to zone three, it's also on electric and I can set that at 72. So this will keep it nice and warm in the coach. You can see down in the bottom left, the outside temperature is 63 and we're quite comfortable in here. So that's if I want to do electric and uh, throw it. Now, if I want to do AC, it's pretty much the same thing down at the bottom center. I can push um, and choose auto, which will do heat and cold. And so now I'm gonna set the rear AC to cooling and it's set at 75 degrees. I'm gonna tap the zone up there, go to the front one and I'm gonna set it to cooling and it is set at 80. So I'll bring that down to say 72 and then my floor heat i'm going to leave on because i like to have the floor warm while the acs are running i like to walk around bare feet and uh, so now i can keep the floor warm and i can cool the air with acs and uh, you can hear the, the different zone acs are coming on now this one here i'll put at 72 as well so we'll have the rear ac coming on and the front ac coming on and the floor will be on heat, so to keep the floor warm. So you can have it nice and cool in here with a warm floor for barefoot walking. But if I'm on, if it is cooler outside and I want to have zone two, I could run the heat pump instead. So I could just switch aqua to um, the heat pump, which is electric. There we go. And then now the inside temperature is 80 but I have set it to 81 degrees for the set point. So the center should come on and there it goes. So all three heat, three heat pumps are on now and it's warming things up. So that's with electric heat. Now, if it was really cold outside, I could go to setting, let's go back to zone one. Okay, I can. Let's say it's cold outside. I can set the front to aqua. Zone two to aqua. And zone three to aqua. There we go. I went around a few times, but now all three zones are set at heating the coach. 
So in that case, zone one is the floor registers in the front of the coach. And zone two is the floor. And zone two, you usually want about 10 degrees above the other ones. So we'll set it at 82. And zone three, we have it set at 72. So the front is on heat for the registers. The back is on heat for the registers. And the middle midship is the floor, which is on heat through the floor. And just so you can hear how these registers do come on, I'm going to go back to zone one. You can see the inside temperature is at 73. If I raise that up to say 74, you'll hear the heat registers come on and start blowing air. And there we go. So these are the heat registers on the front of the coach. Uh, the glyco from the aquahot is going through them and they're pumping heat out into the room. And again, I can do the same thing I'll shut off zone one now, those heat registers. I'll put it down to 70. This should shut off in a moment, there we go. And then I'm gonna go over to zone three and I'm gonna have those heat registers come on. So the inside temperature is 73, so I'll lower it uh, down to, Oh, the inside temperature is 73. I got to go above 73. Here we go. And now the registers in the rear should come on. I don't know if you can hear them from the front of the coach, but they're just coming on. And again, if I lower the temperature down, those registers will shut off. And there we go. So you can see how configurable this is. And I'm doing this via Wi-Fi, so I can do this from anywhere in the world. And there's so many ways that you can play around with this system. It's just kind of fun. Uh, also here on the home in the bottom right, it says home, and these are the settings I have. If I click away, this is my upper and lower limit. And I can set that for each zone. And... Uh, you know, maybe you don't want this furnace running that much while you're away or the cold or the AC is running that much while you're away. Uh, we have a dog, uh, Lexi, and uh, these settings are fine for her when we're not here. So it doesn't have to stay that consistent, but it will keep from, from getting too cold or too hot. So another thing we could do here is we could go into scheduling, which is the gear icon at the top, right? Okay, and you can edit the schedule. And right now the schedule is disabled across the board. So we'll start with zone one. Let's say zone one, you wanted it to, you know, be cooler at night. Um, let's say 70 degrees. At 12 a.m., it'll be 70 degrees. You say, okay. So you can see that at the top right in zone one at 12 a.m., it's 70 degrees. Now, let's say you get up around 8 a.m. And you want it to be, you know, 72 degrees at 8 a.m. You can see that's in there. And uh, in the evenings, you know, or let's say you leave during the day. Let's say at, uh, you go to work at, say, um, 10 o'clock. So we'll go to the next one and we'll say we'll enable it for 10 a.m., and we'll lower the temperature back down to 70 while you're away. So what happens now is at midnight it's 70 degrees, at a.m. 8 a.m. it's 72, and at 10 a.m. when you're expected to be out it goes down to 70 again. And you can adjust this in all the different zones. And then let's say you get home around 5 p.m. and you want to be 72 in here again, so you go back to Five, and then you change it to p.m. and you want it to be 72 degrees. So you can see in zone one there, we've now got it at 70 uh, during the night, 72 in the morning when you wake up, and 70 when you go off to work, and 5 p.m. it goes back to 72 when you're expected to come home. So it's nice and comfy in here for sure when you want it to be. Now this one that's at 12 a.m., let's say you go to bed at uh, 10 p.m. and you want it to be cool in here. Well, you can go back and edit that 
and you can change it from 12 to say 9 and you can change it to p.m. and say okay so now you can see at 9 p.m. it goes down to 70 and at 8 a.m. it goes back to 72 and then at 10 a.m. it's 70 and at 5 p.m. it's 72 so this is a great thing that you can set up schedules like that and once you have the schedule configured you just turn it on and you're good another thing you want to do is you want to check for updates we have the latest update nothing to worry about there update your location well we're in a motorhome and we drive to different locations all the time so you want to keep your location up to date so when it shows you what the outside temperature is it's accurate so i just update my temp to my location and boom notifications you can set it if it goes you can set these limits and if it goes outside those limits it'll give you a notification and i should turn that on as you can see it's a very complex little gadget um, it's well worth the money i love it already i can access the internet or i can access the coach through the internet i can change the temperature setting anywhere i can change from ac to heat i can monitor it it can send me uh, messages if uh, I've gone out of range you know we have to worry about Lexi here when we're not here and make sure everything's okay but other than that it's it's we love it so uh, if you're interested check it out uh, micro air um, micro air easy touch RV fantastic gadget thanks for watching everyone take care now please like and subscribe and leave a comment I'd like to know what you thought about this take care everyone bye now